This video is for educational purposes only. Please do your own research and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I love being wrong because that means that I learned something. Communism, right? Comes along with the Soviet Union, right? Soviet Union, right? And communism, the Communist Manifesto was written by a guy named Karl Marx, right? You may not know that Karl Marx's actual name was Joseph Mordecai Levy, right? So Joseph Mordecai Levy, let me hint, hint on that one. Right? The communists came along and they had a big H word called the Holodomor. Holodomor, right? And the whole idea of communism is multiculturalism, right? And they uh, introduce communism under the guise of multiculturalism, right? So the idea, right, that America is a big melting pot came from that um, theater play, right? If you know anything about theater like I do, my degrees in theater, unfortunately, I know a little too much about theater. Theater has been the vehicle for communism for years and years and years with Berthold Brecht and all these guys, and they always say, like, oh, communism is, is good for people, right? Well, and multiculturalism, and, and I, I, you know, being multicultural is great, right? The problem is that if you put in some blue and some green and some yellow, and you put in all the colors of the rainbow, you pretty much end up with brown, which is what I am, right? And it waters down all the culture. You know what I mean? You can say all you want to, like, oh, it diversifies and makes everything so rich and beautiful. Like, yeah, you can study other cultures and you can, you know, appreciate them for what they are. But the fact is, if if you combine all these cultures, you just end up with a big melting pot of nonsense, which is what we have in the United States now, which is what they did in Russia, right? So in the Holodomor, in Russia, they killed 100 million people. They starved them to death with the collectivization of food. And the way they were able to do this is that they propped up all these minority groups. Uh, the central bankers um, promoted them and gave them money so that they could come in and, you know, they weren't even from Russia, but they came into Russia and they propped up uh, the, the Muslims and all these different minority groups and they supported them so that they could get political power and they could overthrow the majority. And once the majority, which is the main culture, right, the, the, the foundational culture of the place, once they were out of the way, then you have all these different little minority groups, and what do you, what is that? That's divide and conquer, right? It's one of the easiest tricks in the book, is to divide and conquer, right? So, so that's the communists, and they were the Reds, right? And so the Reds came into Russia, and they absolutely destroyed Russia and killed a hundred million people. Well, when they were done with Russia, they were moving across Europe, and gave rise to fascism, which fascism, the term comes from the fascia, like our fascia in our body, or the fascia uh, from like ancient Rome, which is like a bundle of sticks, right? The uniting, the bringing together. And so where communism was very much focused on multiculturalism and uh, bringing all these different cultures together, fascism was all about uh, propping up and promoting the main culture of the um, of the people, right? Which is why, you know, who was able to become so powerful. I gotta be careful what I say on here. This is all just supposed to be history, right? But if I say certain things, they're gonna flag it and they're gonna take it down. Right? And they're responsible for their big H word, which apparently killed six million, right? Which I don't know if you know how many times six divides into a hundred million, right? But the scales are still tipped historically very much, you know, one way as far as that's concerned. The difference between these two, right, is a monoculture and a multiculture, right? And the multiculture's aim is to destroy culture, and the monoculture's aim is to protect and promote the dominant culture of the area, right? And they are responsible for great things like the grape of Berlin, right? 
and I'm saying Grape of Berlin, but go ahead and put in Grape of Berlin into your uh, you know, search engine. Go to bitshoot.com and search that and just take the G off of there and you'll see how, what great things the communists are responsible for, right? And of course the these guys over here, right? I live in Alabama, which is a red state, and I've been hearing a lot of people talk about, oh, the fascist red, the fascist red states that you live in, like, yeah, man, I'll give you that, because, you know, these guys eventually became the Republican Party, and these guys became the Democrat Party, right? So, if you're voting for these guys, you're voting for these guys. If you're voting for these guys, you're voting for these guys, right? Congratulations, America. The only problem is that even if you're voting for these guys, you're voting for these guys because they won. America entered World War II on the side of these guys, right? And it wasn't until we got over there and saw everything that they did that we were like, holy crap, who have we been fighting with? Who, who have we been fighting for? Right? These communists that have done all these horrible things. You know, because what happened right after World War II? We had the Cold War, and we were scared of the communists, and we were trying to get them out. J. Edgar Hoover, everything like that, right? So, so we're afraid of the communists after World War II, but the problem was we already have a central bank. A central bank is what we have right now. The Federal Reserve is neither federal and it has no reserves. It's not part of our government. This is a bunch of communist psychopaths. <laughs> foreign. This is a foreign entity that controls the flow of money into our government, into our system, right? And that is why after World War II, we had Project Paperclip that got all the best Nazi scientists and they, they came in and they became NASA, right? So that's, that's what happened there. And of course the communists had already won. They had already infiltrated. They owned all of our press and all of our media. That's why they were able to trick the United States into entering the World War II, into World War II on their side, right? So, so they're still around. They're still pulling the strings because we still have a central bank. And if you don't know what it, you know where a central bank comes from, it's in the Communist Manifesto. Karl Marx talks about a central bank that is not controlled by the people, that is not controlled by their government, and is outside of their government. Right? So when you control the monetary system and the flow of money and interest rates, then you control the the people without having to control the people. And what you can do is you can prop up this whole idea of red versus blue, us versus them, everything like that. You can, and if you go to Google and you search national cultural development under communism, you can read a whole CIA document that, you know, was hidden and is now released. But when you read that document, you'll see that the, the communists in Russia did exactly what they're doing here in the United States, is uh, by, by supporting minority groups and making them stronger so that they can get more votes from them. And then once they're in power, they just destroy everybody. So until we get rid of the federal reserve, which is a central bank, we will forever be a communist country. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is a tenet of communism, which has destroyed America, which is responsible for the stock market crash and everything like that that happened. Right? And there's one, there's one uh, nation specifically that was given to a certain group of people. If you look up what's called the Balfour Declaration, you'll know what I'm talking about, which is at the end of World War II, in exchange for America getting involved in the war, these certain people were gifted a, a property, an area that, that they never owned, they were never part of it, right? Because they're actually Khazar warriors from northern Turkey, but they are pretending like they are a certain group that they're not. So the Balfour Declaration, 
uh, gave this property to these people and they're still there and they still you know are trying to take control of it from a, another certain group of people and you know you, you do your own research on that one I'm not about to get in trouble for that the central bankers they promote war they give all the money to support all the wars World War one World War two they've been behind all of the war I mean you know the war in Iraq World War three really is what we're in right now right so the central bankers gave a bunch of money to a dolphin. Uh, I'm going to say a dolphin so that this video doesn't get taken down. And then they gave a bunch of money to the commies so that they could create armies of us regular people to fight and kill each other to help depopulate the planet. That's part of what the whole idea is here. Uh, the, they wanted a dolphin to steal a bunch of gold from Czechoslovakia and he did that uh, but then he decided that he was going to turn tail. So there's been several people to stand up against the central bankers. Um, the, the first one was our dude Abraham Lincoln. Now, if you know anything about Abraham Lincoln, if you've done your research, you know that he didn't end the quote-unquote civil war uh, over slavery. He did it uh, over political power. Uh, and in the end, the reason that he was actually killed was he went against the central bank. He went to the central bank for money to fight the war and they said well we'll loan it to you at like 12 13 percent something like that and he was like okay sure thing and he went and he started printing greenbacks well you know what happened to lincoln they xed him so the next guy was a dolphin and this dolphin came along and he did the same thing he started printing out the um, labor notes uh, in germany and the labor notes were backed by by the labor of the people so you'd have like you know one note that was worth one hour of labor right and so they xed him too and then who was the next guy to come along well he was uh, he was john f kennedy and john f kennedy he wanted to know all the information from the cia and and so he also um you know john f kennedy also was like hey uh you know i'm gonna print my own money Congress start printing money and start distributing it in the United States. It's absolutely absurd that the United States and its people do not have control of their own monetary system, right? So, um, so you know what happened to him. Of course, I've been talking about all this for about, you know, the last 15 years. And, uh, you know, if you're listening, then you're listening. And if you're still listening, you probably already know all of this. But if you can help other people out so that they know this stuff, I'm trying to make it as basic as possible, drawn on a Crayola whiteboard. Right? But go to bitshoot.com and search for the Zapruder film and watch the original Zapruder film of when Kennedy gets shot. Kennedy gets shot by the guy in the front seat, the Secret Service man that is uh, in the front seat. He was supposed to kill Kennedy in the event that the other assassin couldn't do it, which it was not Lee Harvey Oswald. Comms and the dolphins, right? Which are essentially, you know, the 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 N word. The, the Nazi party, the new, the new N-word, the Nazi party that people throw away, right? And they became the Republicans, the, the Red Republicans, right? But originally, the Red Communists, right? right? And, and they, were, uh, they were called Democratic Socialists, right? So the Democratic Socialists, and then they became just the Democrat Party. So... Um, if you voted for these guys, you vote, you know what I mean? That's who you voted for, essentially. That is the lineage that you are voting for. And, of course, like I said, they are pretty much the same because both of these parties are beholden to those people that were awarded uh, that land in the Balfour Declaration. APAC and CPAC both make sure that people are elected into our system that are completely in support of these people right? and so you've got these two and it is because they support the Federal Reserve and they support 
big government, right? Which national government, I mean, you can make arguments one way or another, but if we're a bunch of small states, right, then any country that has a big, strong central government and a big, strong standing army could easily take us over. So the idea of a national government is, uh, you know, under the, the protection of the people, right, uh, by, by a standing army. And that is where they get everybody is like, oh, you know, we, you know, we're going to protect you with the army. You know, we're going to protect you with the army. Support the federal government. Support the federal government because that's, you know, where our army comes from, right? So uh, either way, it's the redistribution of wealth. It's the taking of money from one group of people and giving it to another group of people, right? And, and the taking, not, not like the volunteer, not a, not a, a donation. This is, uh, this is theft. This is what's called legalized theft. Taxation is theft, right? And both of these guys want to tax you and they want to steal your money and they're going to take most of it and then some of it they're going to give to the military and things like that. And that's called protection money and that's called the mafia, right? Because anytime somebody comes up to you and says, hey, you have to give me some of your money, you have to give me some of your money or, uh, you know, bad things are going to happen to you. That's the mafia and that's theft, right? If you had a choice in paying taxes, that would be a different story. But if you don't pay your taxes, men with guns are going to show up at your house and they're going to take you to jail. So uh, I hope this clears up a few things for some of you out there. I hope I didn't confuse too many people too much. Uh, just search, you know, a few different things on BitChute, and you have to go to BitChute. Don't go to YouTube. YouTube's algorithm is designed to show you misinformation, and it is not a free speech platform. There are very few free speech platforms out there now where people can say the truth and not get censored for it, because every one of our news media outlets is owned by BlackRock, Black Cube. Right, every one of our media outlets, Netflix, CNN, ABC, MS, LSD, MSNBC, CNN, they are all owned by the same people and they all support the same agenda, which is the multicultural communist agenda that will divide and conquer America and, you know, in some people's opinion, already has, which is why I am happy to live in a red state where we're still allowed to have guns. Our Second Amendment right to bear arms was never about hunting or fishing or something like that. It has always been about the people having the power to rise up against a tyrannical government. So when some psychopath says that they're going to come into my home and make sure I'm doing right with my guns and try to take my guns away, I definitely have a problem with that.